Hello guys, good evening. So this is Dr. Pooja again and I will be helping you understand today all about, you know, spherical mirrors. I know it's been, um, um, there, are, there are so many things involved in it like um, the image formation and what are the different reflected rays and all those things. Kind of little confusing, but don't worry, I'll make it super easy and super simple for you. All right, so let me see if this thing is streaming and connected, and then I'll start going over all these slides that I have put together for you. Okay, quickly, let me see if it is um, it's working. I am not seeing any updates. Give me, give me just a second, guys. Just a second. Hold on. So, um, so this chapter um, I've taken from yes. Just a second. So that is your chapter 10. And um, I have just taken single part like spherical mirrors from uh, from this, this chapter of yours. Okay. Hello, Akshaya. How are you? I hope you're doing great. Wonderful. I'm, I'm just awesome. As you know me, I'm just awesome. Okay. So let's quickly go over this um, spherical mirror thing. And before we get into details, here is little detail and little information about me. Okay. Um, my name is Dr. Pooja. I was a scientist in the United States. And now I teach you guys science on an academy's platform. I teach um, ninth class and 10th class science. Okay. Here is my educational qualifications quickly. I've done a PhD in biotechnology. I was a lab director in the um, United States for eight years. And uh, currently, I'm a fitness coach and I am a science educator on an academy's platform. And another good news for you is if you are signing up today and if you are using this referral, referral code, I'm sorry, PS13, that is my referral code, you will get a 10% off or 10% discount on your subscription today. Okay, so go ahead and use it, guys. And... Um, for the for the you know batch courses okay and apart from that let's first understand what is an academy what do we do here on an academy okay so we are india's um, largest learning platform as you know because this time is all learning online time because of this corona thing running around okay so for that um as i said we have the best educators from all over india and uh, we have uh, you guys to have live sessions with us practice question answer um, sessions with us live quiz and all your di doubt clearing sessions all right so this is what we do this is what we do on an academy so how are we going to help you to understand your slips as i said you don't have to go anywhere guys you just have to have a device an internet system and um, you can watch the presentations that we create for you but let's say you <clears throat> miss any presentation so what will happen nothing all the things are saved for you so you have unlimited access to all the courses all right and uh, as I said, we have all these top educators who will be teaching you different subjects. And when I talk about the batch courses, what do I mean by batch courses? Like we teach you guys um, science, physics, chemistry, biology. That is what I teach you guys. And um, a new kind of um, two to three months, Akshaya. Okay, not more than that. I joined in the month of May. Okay, so if I joined in the month of May, so that means uh, maybe only two months on an academy. All right, but uh, I have teaching experience, so you won't um, have to regret like, why did I join? Okay, so you will see that in today's lecture as well. And uh, so what do we do? Uh, we have created these batch courses for you and uh, you can have unlimited access to the presentations that we make for you. You have regular doubt clearing sessions, live test series then you get all this study material all the notes that we create for you okay so um that is the benefit of uh, signing up with us um here how 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 you can join okay that is that is the main question so um on you go to anacademy.com uh kartike gupta i am an educator for english okay but if you have any questions i'll be able to answer those questions
Okay, guys, I'm, I'm so sorry about this. There was um, some network issues. I hope um, you are able to see me. Give me a second. Let me double check real quick. Let me double check. Hold on. So, are you able to see me now? Okay, great. I guess this, this whole thing is fixed. Hello, guys. So can you guys see me? Is it is it working now? Wait a second. Yes, looks like yes. Okay, I'm I'm sorry about all this network issue, but now we are back online again and let's get started. Okay, great, Akshaya. So let's get started with this topic that we have picked for today's spherical mirrors and what are the images? What are different type of images? formed by spherical mirrors okay before we get into the detail let's first understand what is light and what is reflection because we cannot understand all these these two topics without understanding these two okay so let's first of all understand this what is light so that is the very basic question that is the very basic thing that we know light is something which enables us to see the objects okay that is what we call light I'm not foreigner, Deepa Chauhan. I'm Indian. Okay, it is just like um, I, I I worked in the United States, so that that's maybe you know you find uh, me look like you know a foreigner, but I'm an Indian. Anyways, so light is uh, this is what enables us to see the objects. It always light always travels in straight paths, which means it travels in straight line. You bring something in its way, it will stop traveling. Okay, it will change its path maybe. And, um, you know, it passes through transparent objects like you see glass. It will pass through the transparent objects, but it does not completely pass through translucent and it will not pass through opaque objects. So this is like um, very basic points about light. And let's um, understand what is reflection. Okay, because if we know reflection, only then we will talk about uh, image formation by the mirrors okay so let's first understand translucent means which are not completely transparent okay like you take a rice paper or you take a paper and put some oil on it so it is not clearly light will not completely pass through it or light will not get completely blocked by it only a little bit of light will pass through it okay opaque is which there is no passage of light through those objects okay so reflection is the phenomena from a highly polished surfaces like a mirror so understand this for example you have some kind of for example let's say this this is mirror so this this part of it is all polished okay and reflection will happen from this surface okay so this is called the other side will be polished and reflection will happen from this front surface so um, uh, why I'm showing you this because when we talk about these spherical mirrors we'll have to understand which part of the mirror is polished and which part of the mirror is reflecting the light okay so um, uh, before we get into more details of reflection let's first understand what are the basic laws of reflection so we have um, reflection when reflection happens the angle of incidence incidence is what the angle at which the ray comes and strikes the surface that is called the angle of and that angle that it makes is called angle of incidence and the angle of reflection after attacking that surface it goes back okay and that is called angle of reflection so the incident ray which is attacking or which is coming on that surface that is called incident ray reflected rate but when it goes back after reflection is called reflected ray and the normal to the mirror at the point of reflected and incident ray, they are all at the same plane okay always remember this how this is uh, the the pictorial representation of the same okay guys so reflection of light as i said this is plane mirror 
okay this is the reflecting surface and this the behind one the behind one is what this is the polished surface light will incident ray it is falling on the surface after falling on the surface because the other side is polished this light is not passing through the mirror it is getting reflected so this is called reflection okay so we have incident ray we have reflected ray so what we just learned it makes incident may incident ray makes angle of reflection over here and uh, i'm sorry angle of incidence after reflection it makes angle of reflection and this is the normal so angle of incident incident ray reflected ray and normal all these are at the same plane always remember that okay so this was like how the light is incidenting and how the light is getting reflected so these are the important points that you have to remember when we are talking about mirrors reflection happens in case of mirrors so um so we know you all must have uh, seen mirror in your daily life you know when you look into the mirror you see your image okay then why is that image formed in the mirror okay and what are the properties of that image which is formed in the mirror so these are the four most important properties of the images that are formed in the mirror okay so what are those first of all we'll will not go into the details of like um, the uh, images formed in the in the no stage i'm not i'm not foreigner guys i'm indian mai bhartiya hu ek bhart भारत में पैदा हुई पली भड़ी एंड यू नो दो आई वाज अ साइंटिस्ट इन यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स अमेरिका में आई वाज देयर फॉर एट इयर्स वहाँ पे मैंने आठ साल एज अ साइंटिस्ट काम किया बट नाउ आई एम बैक इन इंडिया एंड आई एम टीचिंग यू गाइस साइंस ऑन अन अकेडमिक प्लेटफॉर्म ओके आई एम नॉट आई एम नॉट फॉरनर खम ऑन डोंट कन्फ्यूज डोंट गेट कन्फ्यूज आई एम नॉट फॉरनर आई एम इंडियन राइट सो हेयर विल टॉक अबाउट द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ इमेज बाय द प्लेन मिरर एंड there are, there are these four important properties anyway satish patidar padhai pe dhyan de lete hain thoda sa right okay so these are always i will not get into the details of the images formed by the plane mirror because that is not our today's topic our today's topic is images formed by the spherical mirror okay that we will discuss and uh, this is just to get you an idea like how the images are formed in a plane mirror so they are always virtual and erect virtual means they are not they are formed behind the mirror okay and size is equal to that of the size of the object and um, image formed is as far behind as the object is in front of the mirror so that is the distance of the mirror of the image which is formed in the mirror and they are laterally inverted laterally inverted means like your right hand will be uh, image is left hand okay so this is what we call laterally inverted so as i said we'll not get into the details of these mirrors let's say what will happen if you look into a spherical mirror okay if you look have you ever tried that have you tried looking into a spherical mirror what does it look like what is a spherical mirror have you seen spherical mirrors in your daily life of course what are those like if you look into the spoon if you look into the cars the the wings wing mirrors of the car those are all spherical mirrors okay so what happens when you look into the spherical mirror what kind of images are formed okay let's see that so what kind of images you see in a shining spoon have you ever tried if not then try it today is it smaller the image that you see in that spoon is it smaller or is it larger is it upright upright means straight as you are looking into it or inverted matlab ulta ho gayi hai so why is there a difference if you are not looking into the straight mirror or the plane mirror but you are looking into the spherical mirror why there is a difference that you see okay so that erect means straight standing erect standing straight okay so so that is what we will discuss today okay all the images uh, formed in the in the spherical mirror 
सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज द स्फेरिकल मिरर होता क्या है स्फेरिकल मिरर सबसे पहले तो वो जानना बहुत जरूरी है हैव यू एवर सीन इफ नॉट सीन सो आई विल शो यू द पिक्चर्स ऑफ स्फेरिकल मिरर इन टू दिस लेक्चर ओके सो लेट्स लेट्स सी वॉट आर दिस फेरिकल मिरर सो वी हैव टू टाइप्स ऑफ स्फेरिकल मिरर्स ओके द मिरर्स वेयर द रिफ्लैक्टेड सर्फेस इज कर्ड and is part of the sphere i will show you in the next diagram so reflected surface is curved okay for example let's say this is let's say is a straight mirror is a plane mirror when it is curved like this let's say this is the reflected surface when it is curved this is curved and these this back side is polished so this is curved this is called concave mirror okay but let's say and and let's say that it will be a circle complete circle okay so it is part of the sphere let's put it this way and this is as i said concave mirror but let's say let's say this is the reflecting surface now this is the reflecting surface and the surface behind this one is the polished one so if this is the reflecting surface this is what we call convex mirror okay where it is bulged out okay so this is mirrors with a spherical reflecting surface are called spherical mirrors either convex or concave all right so this is i mean a, a very quick uh, i just uh, quickly i wanted to show you guys so let's here you go here is the real spherical mirror i just wanted to show it to you so these uh, this big uh, you know balls are like uh, spherical mirrors you see over here you can see your pictures in them and uh, even on the roads when there are this like kind of a, a a blind spot so they have this mirror when you you must have seen like when you get out of the parking or there is a there is a dead end kind of a thing okay where there is a um, dead end kind of a thing there also you see these kind of spherical mirrors okay so uh, give me a second i lost i lost i lost the track i thought we are not connected i'm sorry so here you go another example of spherical mirror is this rounded ball you see another example of spherical mirror and i i already explained to you what are the different types of spherical mirror concave mirror you remember that uh, that business card i showed you when it is uh, when it is like uh, curved inwards like this like this this is this is what concave mirror when it is curved out like this this is called convex mirror all right so this is all about uh, concave and convex mirror mm -hmm. you can find concave and convex mirrors in your home and uh, uh, maybe around you all right so let's see here are more examples so concave this is what i just showed you it is this the grayed out area if you see this this grayed out area is what this grayed out area is the polished area because it's a mirror so in mirror we have to have a polished area so this grayed out area is polished area and this over here is the reflecting reflecting area okay so this is the reflecting surface and this is the polished surface like um just like a spoon just like this small uh, ladle that we have and um, how about convex mirror so here is an example of convex mirror here we have this polished surface over here and this is the reflecting surface over here this is the reflecting surface similarly you see uh, these um, convex mirrors all around you in the malls and in different places so now as we have discussed what are convex mirrors and what are concave mirrors let's quickly let's quickly talk about important terms that we use that we will be using while talking about you know uh, these convex and concave mirrors okay for example what is pole first of all let's understand what is pole so here is your which mirror is this this is your concave mirror because this is the reflecting surface hi somit how are you very good evening you are little late so this is the the reflecting surface is concave so this is a concave mirror 
so what is the pole pole is i have highlighted it yellow over here the center of the reflecting surface so this is the reflecting surface the center of the reflecting surface of the spherical mirror is called pole okay it lies on the surface of the spherical mirror it is denoted by p so this is is this diagram is self explanatory where i say the center of the reflecting surface of the spherical mirror is called pole represented by p okay so next is what is center of curvature what is center of curvature hello um, narpat singh shekhawat welcome to the session so what is center of curvature so the reflecting surface of the spherical mirror forms part of the full sphere as i said as i showed you let's say there is a full sphere so the reflecting surface is part of that full sphere i created please excuse my diagram so here is let's say this is a sphere this is a full sphere but this red line is not visible to us we are just talking about this part when we are talking about this part imagine it is a big sphere and that center of the sphere that center of the big sphere is what that center of the big sphere is called the center of curvature okay so it is represented by c it is not part of the reflecting surface you can see guys it is not part of the reflecting surface it is just an imaginary point that we can see okay this should be the center of curvature all right so um for in case of um in case of you know concave mirror it is in front of the reflecting surface in case of convex mirror it's behind the reflecting surface and that is pretty much clear to you all right let's say there is a ball over here you cut the ball in half you will see that imaginary center is the center of curvature for a concave mirror in front of this reflecting surface but in case of convex mirror let's say this is a ball it will be in the center of the ball and this this area is the this area is what the reflecting surface for convex mirror simple is this clear to you guys is this clear to you guys what is the center of curvature now let's see what is radius of curvature of the mirror okay so whatever the radius of the sphere is okay of the spherical mirror that we are talking about is called radius of curvature so let's see in a picture here you go so the radius of curvature is p to c this point okay the point from pole to the center of curvature is the radius of curvature because that is the radius of the sphere all right you got it so now let's go to the next point here you go what is principal axis guys this is super important okay so when we talk about principal when we start talking about you know images how the images are formed then we will talk a lot about principal axis then we will talk a lot about pole and focal length and focus and center of curvature so that is why i want you guys to get familiarized uh, with these terminologies okay so principal axis it is not a line it is an imaginary line you can imagine okay the line passing through the the pole okay the imaginary line passing through the pole and the center of the curvature of a spherical mirror is called principal axis okay here you see let's say it is a circle a big circle here the center is the center of curvature this p is a pole and this highlighted yellow area okay is the principal axis i hope this is clear to you and principal axis is same for your uh, this thing for your um, concave mirror for your convex mirror all right so now before we get into more details there is another point i would like to talk curvature like the curved area okay that is the curvature so let's talk about an important activity i don't know whether you guys have tried it or not i have tried when i was a kid okay i used to do different things uh, so what happens is let's say you have a mirror 
Okay, you take a concave mirror. Do it, do it this activity at home. So you take this concave mirror. You have a black paper on the on the ground. Okay, you put it on the ground. You you try to adjust in such a way, like all the light is falling on that black black paper. Okay, you see a thin point where you can see. Okay, that light is coming to a one point. Okay. what you will see all the radiation coming from the infinite point which is your sun okay all the rays coming from that after hitting the concave surface they get converged converged means they are coming to a one point see do you see we have taken candle here but let's say these are coming from the sun because i'm talking about sun here so all these points they will be meeting at one point somewhere okay so let's say that meeting point will catch fire okay be very very careful using this concave mirror activity be super cautious guys okay when you see all these points are getting together at one point and that point catches fire what is this point called this point is called principal focus okay don't get confused with principal axis guys that is this this imaginary line over here somewhere okay principal focus is where all the reflected rays they converge in case of in case of concave mirror in case of convex mirror convex mirrors are diverging mirrors they don't bring hello hello royal sharma they don't bring all the light points to a uh, one point they diverge they spread them okay i'll show you in the next next picture here you go okay so in case of convex mirror whatever light is coming from in infinity it is going back it is going back in the space okay in the in the in the area so you extrapolate them you draw them back and you will see okay the focal point will be somewhere here so this is the principal focus where all the rays after reflection they meet okay and and another important point so first of all let's understand what is principal focus the point on the principal axis where all the refracted rays refracted rays i'm sorry are meeting is called principal focus and it is represented by capital f okay and what is focal length focal length is the distance between the pole and the principal focus okay the pole and the principal focus the distance is called your focal length okay and it is represented by small f please excuse my this study drawing anyways um understanding the concept is most important so um i i i'm just showing here in this picture is uh, a concave mirror it said this is a concave mirror hello immortal warrior how are you hope you are doing great so we are getting all these rays from infinity uh, the example i took like the rays are coming from sun and they are all meeting at one point when they are meeting at this point this is the point where you get that fire thing okay so this is called this capital f over here is called principal focus and the distance between the pole and the principal focus is called focal length guys and this is represented by the small f this is my small f okay don't get confused with the capital f capital f is over here which is principal focus okay so remember this so very good evening very good evening i hope you you guys are doing great all right so we have this um now another important term is what is a perchure so the diameter of the reflecting surface of the spherical mirror, mirror is called a perchure we'll be considering those cases when a perchure is much smaller than the radius of the cup so this is um this was all about different important points and let's say if you guys are uh signed up for the for the batch courses and uh, you want to study like physics chemistry uh which red line this is nothing this was just my um uh labeling of this thing okay just 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 the labeling like okay this this difference uh, p to f is called the focal length this red light means nothing guys i'm sorry if it is if you're getting confused because of this 
all right so i was talking about like um i teach you guys physics chemistry and biology on an academy's platform okay and uh, i teach you guys in a super simple easy way and uh, curvature is the center let's say because all these spherical mirrors are are from a part of a sphere right you just uh, assume you just assume there is a, a, a ball a green colored cork a uh, green colored that tennis ball you cut it okay that internal part of that ball is the reflecting surface and that that middle point of that ball okay the center of the sphere is the curvature center of curvature we call it okay so uh, so guys yes i was talking about if you want to study physics chemistry and biology with me then you have to go ahead and sign up on an academy's platform because that is the place where i teach you guys science okay i i, I teach you guys physics and chemistry and biology this month is our physics month we are covering all the important topics of physics and we are doing those numerical problems on a daily basis okay and next month is going to be my chemistry month where i want to make sure all my students they are super duper comfortable with chemistry all the formulas and everything uh, uh okay so let's talk about what are, so so my name is dr pooja okay i've done i've done phd in biotechnology and uh, i was a scientist in united states now i'm back and i'm teaching science on an academy guys so if you want to uh, if you want to study from me you will have to sign up on an academy's platform my code is ps13 even if you don't want to sign up you can go ahead and check out the lectures that i that i have delivered on youtube and i have delivered on um an academy's platform then you will get to know the quality of work we do for you guys okay go ahead and start following me on an academy you will you will get to know the difference okay so all right so with this we have completed like what are the different type of mirrors are there spherical mirrors what are the important terminologies that we have covered apart from that now we will learn because see this chapter is super duper important guys and from this chapter you can get all these diagrammatic representations of different images formed okay so from that from diagram point of view you can cache all these marks in the exams it is super duper easy and simple i'm going to explain it okay very easy like how the how the images are formed by the concave mirror so let's let's understand that so there are basically six type of images are formed uh, ps13 ps pooja sharma 13 is my code if you want to use it you can use it on an academy's platform and uh, you can also follow me there and uh, here is my name uh wait a second here is my name and you can search me on a, an academy with that name okay um so anyways so i said there are like six different type of images formed by um concave mirrors depending upon and the the position the size and the nature of the mirror uh, of the image okay aperture is the, the, the diameter the diameter okay so the position size and nature of the image it depends upon what it depends upon the position of the object so there are six positions that we will discuss in this in this um, lecture and the image will be found where the two reflected rays intersect so these are the six conditions guys you can get draw a diagram for any of these six conditions so let's make them super simple today okay hi ashraj bana welcome to the session so let's make it super simple my job is to make these um magnetic effects of electric current so uh, my gravitation uh, electricity chapter is complete okay um uh, maybe we are doing uh, resistance in parallel and series now so maybe after um couple of days maybe next week i will start that chapter magnetic effects of um, electric current all right so maybe next week somewhere uh, sometime we will start that okay so if you want you can be part of it i mean i'm going to make it super simple super easy for you guys so all right so here uh, here we go and uh, we have these six conditions guys 
So what you have to remember here is in case of concave mirror, all the images are real and inverted except one where the object is between P and F. Okay, I will show you P is what? Pole. F is what? Focal point. Okay, principal focus. So between these points, if we put some object, then the image will be virtual and erect. Apart from that, all the images formed by the concave mirror are real and inverted. Real means they are formed in front of the mirror, not at the back of the mirror. Anyways, um, let's understand this, like how this thing happens. So you have six, six locations. Okay, so um, here we go. Um, what kind of six positions we will talk about from this diagram i'll just quickly explain one from infinity two beyond c like somewhere here three at c four between c and f five at f six between f and p so we are moving towards the pole what are we doing we are moving towards the pole and the image will be moving away from the pole okay let's let's understand how so if the uh, the the light is coming from infinity image will be at focus if it is beyond c it was it between f and c if it is at c image at c it's between c and f image beyond c if it's at f c these points i will i will show you I don't take many quiz guys so let me let me let me show you so before even we talk about all these positions let's first talk about what kind of rays come and go back right I mean in what is the like incident ray and how it gets reflected let's understand all those points okay so what is happening a ray if it is parallel to the principal axis so this is our principal axis okay if ray is coming parallel to the principal axis it will go through focal the that uh, principal focus you see this line over here if it is coming parallel to the principal axis it will pass through principal focus that is condition number one condition number two opposite let's say a ray is passing through the principal focus it will go parallel to the principal axis opposite initially the ray was coming parallel to the principal focus i'm sorry principal axis and it was passing through the principal focus now whatever ray is coming through the principal focus it will go parallel to the principal axis now if a ray is coming through the c curvature it will back, go back on the C itself. Okay. That center of principal axis is imaginary line going through the pole of the curvature. Uh, I'm sorry, pole of the spheric line that I'm highlighting. Okay. So, and the next one is if the incident rays of blaze that we will see how they are coming and how they are getting reflected understand the type of images which are formed by the concave mirror this is super important guys from a diagrammatic point of view and let me have quickly a sip of water because I'm all right so let's go over let's dig into it okay guys are you finding it easy or anything difficult you're finding so far let me know so I'll, I'll try to fix it for you i'll try to fix it for you all right, so here we go. So we said there are six conditions for concave mirror. One is image is at infinity. That is the first point that we will discuss. Okay. So I will, I will talk about that reduction in chapter later. But let's first talk about like how images are formed. Okay. So uh, we are getting let's say uh, light from infinity. So what is happening? the rays are falling 
like what kind of rays are we are taking here the ones parallel to the principal axis and they will pass through the focus that is what we have learned rays coming parallel to the principal axis will pass through the focus point or principal focus and the image will be formed at focus okay at the focus here the image will be real and inverted that is what i just said for concave mirrors all the images will be real and inverted all you see the image will be because it is it is too small we are not able to see it uh hello uh, mr hido okay so here we get here we get we get the very very small image and we are not even able to see it so so this is case number 1 case number 2 when this this um object is beyond c beyond c means it is not from infinity but somewhere over here a bill away from point c like this so here is our curvature i will just go over all these points one more time so this is a concave mirror this is our pole this is our uh, center of curvature and this is our principal axis and when we have this object beyond c like this ab object is beyond c what kind of image is formed let's understand that so we are getting like there are two kind of rays one parallel to the principal axis that we have taken you can take any two rays guys any two rays so we are taking one parallel to the principal axis another one passing to the curvature so when this is happening when this is happening what are we getting what are we getting we are getting image formed between between c and f see the image is moving towards the uh, away from the pole okay when we are placing objects towards the pole image is uh, formed away from the pole so here is the ab it is inverted but real why inverted it is uh, like facing downwards and it is real because it is formed in front of this curvature thing okay let's go to the next point images formed by a concave mirror and here when we have this at c so when we place the object at point c curvature okay and these are the rays coming what will happen what will happen the infinity point is any point let's say sun from the sun it is coming okay so in this case it we placed it at c we are taking these two rays one passing through focus another passing parallel to the principal axis the image is formed at c it is of the same size okay as we are guys as we are moving towards the pole image is getting bigger from infinity image was very very small beyond c image was little larger but it was smaller in size at c the image is equivalent to whatever the original size is okay here when we have um, the the object between c and f you see between c and f we have placed this object as like this and the image is formed beyond c okay it is formed beyond when you go over that table one more time that it will be very easy for you to remember all the different kind of images that we are seeing okay and the image is enlarged do you see here the the original object is very really small but when you see this image is like too big okay and again it is real because it is forming beyond this point and it is inverted because it is uh, facing downward it is not facing upward the object is facing upward but the image is formed facing downwards all right and here is um, the when we have the object at f the image is formed at infinity it is highly enlarged uh, we won't be able uh, even able to see the image okay it is like too too big and again it is real and inverted then we get uh, images by a concave mirror when we place um the object between f and p point okay f is your principal focus and p is your pole when you place the image in between these two points what we will see 
behind the mirror see image is formed behind the mirror so this kind of image is called virtual image because it is formed behind the mirror and it is erect first time when you place the object between f and p point the image will be erect mm. oh c and f okay so what happens is when we were talking about spherical mirrors they are like big spheres big circles like this okay you the whatever the center point is that center point of the sphere is center of curvature so that is what we call c and f is the focus point or principal focus what is principal focus where the rays after reflection they meet okay that is the principal focus of that mirror so here this uh, in the in the distance between the principal focus and the pole is called focal point okay guys that is called focal point so here uh, was the sixth case um, that we discussed but now this was all about concave mirrors now let's talk about what is images what are the images which are formed by convex mirrors so there are only two cases in case of convex mirror because every other point is other side of the mirror okay so we will get only two cases in this case one is at infinity and at a finite location finite location means any um, real location which we can you know really point it out not from infinity if it is coming from sun or moon or we don't know where it is coming from then that is called from infinity and if we have any definite position that is we call at a finite position so these two cases uh, there were six cases in case of concave mirrors cave mirrors all right so and, um, then in case of convex mirror we have uh, as i said the picture is like the the image is like super super small size we won't be able to see it if it is coming from infinity all right but let's see when it is coming from a finite location when it is coming from a finite location it's a location that we can assign it on on this earth okay and we know the actual position let's say um between the infinite let's say this is pole and this is any finite position because all the c's and f's and p's are on the other side of the mirror all right so and then the image size is super small it is dimensioned like let's say here is the original original um, your um, um object and here is the image formed in case of convex mirror it is always virtual and erect okay we get virtual and erect um images in case of convex mirrors so um with this uh, we have finished what are concave mirrors what are convex mirrors and we also talked about different kind of radiations uh, i'm sorry uh, rays after reflection and uh, we also talked about what are the different kind of images um formed for concave and talk about what are the uses of convex mirror why do we need to use this convex mirror where do we use this convex mirrors so let's first talk about them so wherever we need to see the wider area in the mirror we use convex mirror for example you see um convex mirror wherever we have these winged uh, mirrors on our cars the side mirrors of your car they are made up of convex mirror because let's say if we have if we have concave mirror what will happen the images are all inverted because that is what we have learned in case of convex mirror the images are always erect okay so we will get erect images in case of convex mirrors they are always given erect image this image is size is small so if the image size is small when we see it in a convex mirror that means we'll be able to cover most of the area if we want to see it okay let's say for the oh thank you so much immortal so that is why i'm saying go ahead and check it, check me out on an academy and you will learn all these points like by heart you won't even have to memorize them they will be like in engrossed in your in your mind okay so thank you so much though
so the image size is very small give us a great so that is the reason we have these winged convex mirrors uh, the sides of the cars because we want to have the driver wants to have a bigger picture of what is happening at the back okay so that is the reason this convex mirrors are there on the on the car side mirrors in winged mirrors of the vehicles at a blind spot that is what i have just mentioned okay so with this are you guys ready for the quiz i know you are super excited uh, uh, for 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 the for the for the quiz that i have so here you go before i end this or before i start with the quiz uh, let me tell you uh, my name is dr pooja i teach you guys science on an academy's platform go ahead and find me out there dr pooja sharma i'll be teaching you science for 9th and 10th class students okay so ps13 is my code if you want to subscribe for our batch courses okay so this question is focal length of the plane mirror is okay focal length of the plane mirror tell me can anybody 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 tell me anybody answering it is at infinite position okay convex mirrors are convex mirrors are converging or diverging or flat or none so converging is which are bringing all the points at one point diverging they are diverging all the all the rays all the points so convex mirrors are diverging in nature okay and here the size of the image is always smaller in plane mirror broken mirror convex mirror or concave mirror so i was just i was just telling you guys why we use convex mirrors in our um, cars winged mirrors because because convex mirrors they give you they give you smaller pictures they give you pictures of the whole thing which is happening because the person who is driving the car needs to see more area so convex um, mirrors they give you smaller and better pictures okay so after reflection from a concave mirror rays of the light parallel to the principal axis converge to a point which is called so what is this point called after reflection from a concave mirror all the rays of light parallel to the principal axis they converge at a point which is called principal focus guys that is called very good immortal you are answering all my questions very good so that is called principal focus and with that we end this session all right so um today's session was all about spherical mirrors that we discussed and um, like what are those different spherical mirrors what are concave and convex mirrors and uh, how do they make images what are factors on which the image formation it depends all right so with that said guys um again find me on an academy's platform if you want to learn science with me i teach you guys physics chemistry and biology on an academy's platform go ahead and sign up there and um, my code is ps13 you can always um, check it out and uh, 